What is up everyone? Welcome to a video or a little set of videos that I think my long-term subscribers and my Mac Savvy subscribers are really going to enjoy. Um, if you're new to the channel or if you've just clicked on this video and you don't know uh, who the heck I am, then maybe this video will seem a little long-winded and a little bit sort of bloated, but I am going to make one of these in-depth top to bottom, sort of acquiring a new machine, unboxing it, um, first boot, OS installation, loads and loads of geeky rambling, and it's gonna be just like some of the videos that I used to do back in the day, because I really, really miss some of these videos. So, without further ado, I want you all to strap in. This is basically an unboxing video, but it's gonna be elaborated in all sorts of different areas, uh, starting with this first area because I don't even own the machine yet, or at least it's not here. Um, but yeah, this is basically an unboxing video. So, it is Monday, October 10th, and this week, um, one of the big things that I want to do on the channel side of things and the video side of things is introduce a new machine, a new Mac, into my workflow. Um, which is also going to transition nicely into hopefully doing the next part of the Office Build series very soon, which will of course be this thing, setting up the workbench properly. Now I'd like to say a big shout out to my buddy Christian. He has recently done a video setting up his workbench, which is a very similar idea to mine. I'll link that down below, you should go and check it out. And one thing that he has on his workbench is a white iMac. Um, I believe his is a 17 inch, uh, I'm not 100% sure on that, but anyway, I saw his video, I saw the iMac, and my mind just started whirring. So, for those of you who haven't read the title, I have indeed bought a 17 inch Core 2 Duo iMac, um, white iMac, and it is going to be a beauty. I bought it on eBay with my birthday money, and um, I don't have a lot of money floating around at the moment to be able to spend on these projects, so that's half the reason why I want to expand on this project so much um, and sort of elaborate on a few of the different elements in regards to this machine. Um, so I've spent my birthday money on this iMac, and not only have I bought it just to make videos about, I've bought it because I think it'll be extremely beneficial for this setup, and that's something that we'll talk about a little bit later. So I watched Christian's video and I was like, that is one sexy machine, and more importantly, that is one sexy machine that I have never, ever, ever spoken about on the channel. I've never taken a look at any iMacs other than iMac G3s, and that one time where I bought an iMac G4 and then sold it two weeks later. I've never looked at any of the flat panel sort of modern iMac designs with the chins and, and you know, it's never really been my scene, but these, uh, Core 2 Duo models are getting old enough now for me to be interested in them because, as you guys know, I do like my older Macs. So, inspiration from Christian in place, I went onto eBay and bought myself the last 17-inch model that they made, which is a 2 gigahertz Core 2 Duo model, 17-inch. Um, what else has it got? 4 gigs of RAM. I'll go over all, this, all of the specs when we unbox it and do the first boot and things. Um, but it's a lovely machine. But today, on Monday, October the 10th, I do not own that machine. Oh, well, I own it, but I haven't had it through the post yet. It has not arrived. So, I'm really looking forward to getting it. But before then, I've got a few other things to show you guys in this early sort of pre-unboxing part of the unboxing. And this may remind you a little bit of the pre-unboxing part of the unboxing that I did for my Mac Pro all the way back in 2011, which was a video that I was checking out the other day and it inspired me to do one of these retro-fueled IMNC videos once again. So, let's yank the camera off of the tripod and take a look at what the heck is going on here. So here we are at my workbench. Now for anybody that has not seen this, um, I, I've lost track of what I've shown in previous videos and things, but this is a little bonus um, here as part of the iMac unboxing. So here's my workbench area, and let me give you guys the backstory. So I am in desperate need to cover the next part of the Office Build series, which will see the um, installation of these components on my workbench. Now all of this stuff is completely loose at the moment, none of it is fitted. Although it looks good, none of it is, is functional. Here's four Ethernet ports, two are going to be on my network, two are going to be internet access only. I know a couple of people are panicking about that, 
um, when I spoke to, well, didn't speak, I made a video and people left comments. I think it was in a networking video maybe. Um, I explained that I was running four ethernet lines up to the workbench, but I didn't explain that two of them would not have access to my network. That's very handy for machines that you want to get online. But of course, um, if you're worried about, you know, infections uh, from that machine in terms of viruses and things like that, then you can keep them off of the network. But anyway, that's completely off topic. Basically, this pile of stuff here, uh, including the amplifier, because as you guys know, I'm incorporating a small audio system onto the workbench. Um, all of this stuff here is left to be installed on the workbench, as well as all of these cool little doobries that I've kind of hinted towards. Um, you know, we've got some really cool things that we'll be installing here. It's all going to be proper. We've got some mains cable and things. And um, yeah, once I do that, then obviously you guys will see that video very, very soon. I'll film the entire process. But we're going to focus on this area of the desk. Now, this toolbox, as much as I've had comments about people saying that they like the toolbox sitting on the desk, unfortunately this was only ever temporary. It looks cool and the drawers are convenient for all sorts of different things that I have in here. Um, but it is not going to be sat there forever. It's much too bulky and um, the top of the toolbox cannot be utilised for any sort of a surface because obviously it opens up and that's where I have my soldering iron and things like that and I want to keep stuff on top of it so it's just not going to work like that. So what's going to happen is I'm going to have a shelf which is pretty much going to be in line with the top of this monitor and it's going to come from maybe about here to about here just by the side of the gaming PC and it will be my shelf for all of this sort of stuff. So tools, all of these little cases, parts and things like that. Anything that I need associated with the workbench and testing and fixing things will be up there on the shelf. And then underneath, I can hopefully inst install a very nice lighting system to give me brilliant illumination while I'm working. So you may be thinking, well, Tom, that's all well and good. Thanks for the extra info, but what the heck does this have to do with a new iMac? Well, Bear with me, folks, because I've got to explain a tiny bit more before we get on to the iMac. This is the Dell 2009W. And as you guys know, this is my test monitor on the bracket. It is fantastic. I love these monitors. I think they're fun. I just think they're great. 1680 by 1050 resolution is ideal for testing. Um, I, I'm just very accustomed to that resolution. They've got VGA, DVI, USB hub, nice size. They look clean and they work with this bracket very well. They're just, they're just great. I, I, I really enjoy it. And uh, it's not hooked up at the moment. And the reason that it's not hooked up is in my previous setup, as you guys know, I basically ran a snake of cables down the bracket and had a bunch of cables that I could pull up from behind the desk and plug into the computers. Well, here's a little bit. And to those people who have already clicked off this video because I'm rambling too much, they will miss out on this cool information. Just a little bit of info for you guys. I will be running a patch for VGA, you know, we're talking a proper desktop box here, VGA, as well as, where is it? It's here somewhere. Oh, there it is, right in front of me. As well as HDMI slash DVI up to the monitor permanently, which is gonna be great. Now then, those patches are gonna sit on the desk here in you know a patch bay like this. So whenever I get a test computer, I just get a VGA cable, plug it in, away to go, job done. But that really doesn't help me for one very important word, which I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to use the word referencing. Now, what the heck am I talking about? Basically, regardless of what I'm fixing here, whether it's a computer or not, or even if the test monitor is in use or the test monitor is not in use, this setup does not have a permanent computer for referencing. Now, what do I mean by referencing? Now, I mean anything from looking up something on Google. So if you, I have a question that I just need to quickly look up on a forum or whatever, or just find a quick answer to something, um, you know, especially repairing PCs, there's always error codes and things that you need to type in and look at. Um, I don't have a PC to do that. So anything from that to downloading little drivers or little utilities, or even just listening to music on this setup or anything like that, I, or making notes as well, making notes, that's another one. Um, I do not have a system to do that on this setup because yes, I have a test monitor, but that could be plugged into um, a computer that I'm working on uh, and it's not gonna be plugged into a system that is permanently on this setup. So finally we get to the iMac. Imagine that that toolbox is not gonna be there. It's gonna be up on a shelf up here that I spoke about and all those little boxes are gonna eventually be filled with parts and screws and things and they're up, gonna be up on the shelf as well. 
right there in that gap, raised up on a little platform, is going to be a nice little iMac, which I am so excited for, guys. I think it's going to be awesome. Now, I'll be able to use that machine to read PDFs, instruction manuals and things, look up diagrams, um, look online, as I said, to ask questions and things on forums or just to Google search things, uh, look up anything for reference, listen to music, download utilities, download drivers, um, or just have a little YouTube video going on in the background while I'm working. Pretty much basic stuff that you do on your machine, but obviously wheeling over here like this, Anything like that would be too much to do at the same time. And I was kind of hoping that my tripod would not fall over, which it didn't. I just dragged it over because the baby's trying to sleep. But yeah, that wheeling over constantly is no good to reference the main system. Plus, if I'm working on something, this system could be off. If I'm just working on a repair, maybe this system isn't even powered up. So this is what I'm going for, folks. And let me just address something about this iMac. Yes, it's limited to running Lion, and yes, I'm fully aware that some of the stuff that I want to do may not be supported, but this is where the beauty of it comes in. Um, the beauty of it is, I get this machine in, I check it out for the channel, I unbox it, blah blah blah, everything goes well, and I get to make videos about a, a new Mac for you guys, which you all love. Now I get to use it for a little bit, and if it works out fine, which it could well do because it's a Core 2 Duo, it's still fully capable of doing Google searches for crying out loud. If it does everything I want it to do, I could keep it on the setup. If it doesn't, I will have the means and wherewithal in place in terms of that shelf and the positioning of the machine, etc., to put maybe, I'll, I'll build it in such a way, the shelf, so that if I want to put a 20 inch iMac up there, a newer iMac at one point, I will be able to do so. But anyway. All of that aside, we'll talk about support in the next video, um, because in the next video I'll hopefully be using the machine. But um, let's move on to another little part. So the toolbox is going to be gone, and I'm going to replace it with a nice acrylic stand that will raise the iMac to a similar height that this monitor is going to be, and that will be perfect viewing. But check this out, guys. Another shout out to my buddy Christian. I will be using a wireless Mighty Mouse, which of course is a blast from the past. Uh, for me, and I should really be careful, I've got shards of glass all over this. I was doing things with lamps and I've got glass and metal shavings and everything here. I should really hoover it. Uh, but <laughs> this is a blast from the past for me. I used to use a wireless ma Mighty Mouse every day. I bought one back in the day brand new and um, for the most part I really did enjoy it. But that mouse eventually died and I have no idea what I did with that mouse. Um, it might be knocking around at my old house somewhere, but this one Chris, or, or did I sell it? I may have sold it. I can't even remember. But Christian donated this to the channel a long time ago, and uh, I'll be using this wireless mouse. So that's that. And the scroll ball is still nice and usable. And um, even when they get really bunged up, the the paper trick works for quite a while. So obviously this machine, this mouse won't see as much use as my main machine, not nearly as much use. So this can just sit around. Eventually, I hope to have some kind of small drawer unit or something clipped under the desk so that I can easily just grab the things that I need. But that'll just sit there out the way. And also. I've bought this. Shout out to my buddy DJ Jones. This was not a donation. I bought this off of him, uh, but he gave me a nice deal. And this is, of course, the Apple aluminium wireless keyboard. Now, I was going to I was going to get a wireless version of my keyboard because I like these Apple USB keyboards. I like the way they look and these match the white iMacs extremely well. However, I decided to go for one of these because it's smaller and it's much easier to throw around on this setup. It can go wherever. So if I'm working on something here, I can chuck it over there. I can still type when I need to and stuff. I can just, you know, throw it about. It's extremely convenient. So I'm going with a wireless keyboard, wireless mouse, iMac up there, and it's going to be networked in not with these four ports. So I'm gonna run another network cable up to the workbench and uh, we'll wire it in, obviously. Now, one quick note about this keyboard. Um, I didn't realize this yesterday when he dropped it off to me. Um, it's not a big concern of mine. I'd worry about it if this was my main keyboard. Um, but yeah, it's not, it's not too bad at all. Basically, there's, think of like a half circle here on the keyboard, um, with this being the worst area, there's like a very soft feeling to the keys. If you hit these top keys, 
they've got a very tactile feel they feel just like uh, my old Apple keyboard as you guys know I used to use a uh, wired aluminium keyboard on my main setup they feel and sound just like the keys should but these ones down here they're a lot more mushy and um, I believe it's had liquid damage, he did mention, but I tested it yesterday and uh, it works fine. It's just a little bit mushy, which to be perfectly honest, I don't mind. And he gave me a good deal. So yeah, that'll be fine, but a little bit, a little bit mushy, but that's okay. So wireless keyboard, wireless mouse. So there is the basic plan. And of course, I am now itching to get this machine. Luckily, I've got a lot of other work this week to distract me, but welcome to my journey uh, of getting this Mac in the post and unboxing it. And uh, I can't wait to, to check it out. I love these little machines. The design is awesome. I've seen them in person a couple of times. And of course, another thing that I completely forgot to mention is this is also nostalgic for me because we are taking a machine here that was available brand new from Apple when I first got my MacBook. And when I first got my MacBook, which was my first Mac, and when I first got into Macs. And you know, it's, it's basically my MacBook with a graphics chip. So it'll be very nostalgic for me. It'll be a very similar experience to using my MacBook. I haven't had a Core 2 Duo machine in use for a while now. Um, I'm not really counting my 2008 MacBook Pro because that's got problems of its own. But yeah, I can't wait to share this with you guys. So I'm gonna stop rambling and I will see you guys in an update tomorrow. And uh, I'm gonna make sure I update you guys every single day. It is Tuesday and we are progressing through the week. I've just stepped into IMNC HQ and the first thing I'm gonna do, the very first thing this morning is power up the system and take a look at the tracking for the iMac. Now, um, yesterday I failed to mention that the iMac has actually been dispatched. For some reason, I didn't get a notification um, which I think I normally do. Um, but yeah, I didn't get a notification and I checked my eBay uh, purchase history and work and it had been dispatched and there was a tracking number and everything. So I was like, thank God, because um, I really don't like those situations on eBay where the sellers don't mark things as dispatched and you don't know what's going on. Um, because if they're a really high rated seller, then you assume that everything's gonna be okay. And nine times out of 10, the package turns up at your front door and it's still not even marked as dispatched, but they've actually given a tracking number and everything, so perfect. Let's check it out. Uh, this is a wonderful site. Awesome. Um, so yesterday when I checked in work, we were here, um, which is, you know, which was pretty cool because I won it on a Sunday and it was Monday yesterday. So today is the 11th, Tuesday the 11th, and at 7.13 this morning it arrived at the National Hub and it has been sorted. So we are pretty much, you know, halfway there really. Um, this is a 48 hour service. So I am expecting this to arrive tomorrow maybe, um, but that would may that, that could be pushing it. eBay estimates uh, th between Thursday and Friday, but that is with up to a two day, um, what do they call it? Two day shipping time to give the seller a bit of breathing room, but it looks like he booked uh, the parcel and got this out instantly. Won it on a Sunday evening, it was out by Monday. So brilliant stuff. Um, that is my iMac update for today. Oh, and I've got one more thing to tell you guys. I bought one of these small iMac acrylic stands, you know, iMac acrylic stand. It's basically just a piece of acrylic um, that fits the base of the iMac, the iMac stand and, and raises it up a little and gives you a bit of storage space underneath. So um, yeah, I think the, I, I had a choice between this clear acrylic and also uh, frosted acrylic. And I think this clear acrylic will really go with the overall sort of white plastic, sort of semi see-through type um, look that Apple were going for at that time with all of their products. Apologies for my, you know, lack of being able to speak properly. It is pretty, well, it's not early. It's uh, 
it's 10 to 10 in the morning, but as I say, this is the first thing that I'm doing today, is giving you guys an update on the iMac. So what I'll do is I'll check the tracking throughout the day to see if it uh, goes anywhere else, to see if it moves along, and I will update you guys if it does. I thought midday would be a good time to do a little refresh on the page, and we are looking identical. So the parcel is indeed being driven to the delivery depot which is cool. Luckily I've had enough stuff this morning to distract me. That's actually my first refresh since recording the um, first clip that you saw this morning. Um, and the same goes for all week really. I've got lots of work to be getting on with. So I won't be sitting here refreshing the page constantly. Um, you know, it's not like it's a mega, mega exciting Mac or whatever, but it's been a good while since I've had a completely different machine in to take a look at and I just thought I'd kind of make a big deal about it. Well guys, I've just been doing the hoovering and this is the first ever time I've used this attachment on one of these mouse mats. And check this out. Look how clean this has come up. Look at that. That's just with air, just with hoovering or vacuuming. So um, yeah, all that glass and metal is gone, which is great. Um, for you know bringing the iMac into the setup but what I'm going to do now is finish my chores finish hoovering the stairs and then I'm going to treat myself to moving uh, my toolbox and those boxes somewhere else and having a general tidy up under the desk to give me perfect um, to give me a perfect place to put the iMac and things like that so yeah, I'm going to finish off the hoovering and then we're going to get on with this. I thought I had a good feeling there'd be a couple of little things to cover this week before the machine arrived. Check this out, guys. That is the open space ready for the iMac. Now, all I'm hoping is that the acrylic stand thing that I've bought fits in this gap perfectly. If it does, that'll be fantastic. I estimate that having the stand here, or maybe even over here and having the iMac sort of more over the top, of uh, of this socket box here would be pretty cool so the iMac is a little bit central and then I've got some more space over here sort of thing. Um, yeah, as you can see that looks a lot cleaner. It's, it's going to look stunning, it really is. And uh, I've just dumped that stuff there for now. I haven't fiddled with anything underneath but we'll do that in a second. Another thing that I've done is I've plugged in two white Ethernet cables here. These aren't in the same class as my other cables but as you guys know I currently don't have any spare ones of these. Um, so these are some that I just got with my power line adapters and I ran two up here and I was hoping that I could plug in the gaming PC and the iMac but unfortunately they only reach to here so I'll get the iMac at a stretch um, but not the gaming PC so that's a bit of a shame um, I do have more Ethernet running back here so it's not a huge issue as you guys know I've got those blue Ethernet cables that are coming out of here um, three of those still have their ends on but one's been chopped off um, just for a little test fit into the into the box but um, yeah so far so good and uh, <laughs> this is turning into a workbench update video um, but I've just stuck my amp up there out of the way for now. That's where it's going to live, which is pretty cool. Um, it's just one less thing to worry about when moving all of this stuff around. So I'm going to continue tidying up and preparing for the iMac. So what I've done for now is I've kind of tried to evenly pack everything under the desk. So before everything was coming out here, so now at least I've got a little bit of space for my legs so that it's not really uncomfortable to work here. Um, this is only extremely temporary. A lot of the stuff that's under here isn't even going to stay under here and um, a lot of it will be going up onto the shelf once the shelf is up. I'm going to look at ordering the shelf very soon because um, it's going to be you know, cheap as chips and then I can stick it on the wall and it'll make space so much easier. But the main goal has been achieved. I am now ready to put the new machine in place there, which will be awesome. As you can see, keyboard and mouse ready. These will pretty much float around this um, area all the time, so if I'm working on something um, you know, quite big, I can throw the keyboard off to the side, throw the mouse over there and work on it, or completely get rid of the keyboard, or just have it wherever it's convenient. You know, if I'm working on something small, like a phone or something here, not that I ever work on phones, but something phone-sized, I can keep my keyboard here, and you know, it's just 
this is why I wanted wireless. I'm not really a wireless person, but for this, it's totally, totally ideal. So can't wait to get the machine up and running now. So I think this is a good, good little thing done, ready, um, ready for when the machine arrives. Good morning, everyone. As you can see, my parcel is out for delivery. So now it's just a case of waiting for it. No, not really. I was only kidding. It arrived about five minutes ago. Basically, I checked the tracking on my phone this morning because um, it's only, what's the time? It's only half 10. So got up about an hour ago, had some breakfast and stuff, checked the tracking on my phone. It was like out for delivery from the, um, from our local depot, so I knew it was gonna be really, really quick. And then, boom, it arrived. And um, yeah, it's in the original box, as advertised, which is sweet. So, without further ado, I think we can get on to the unboxing. So let me find you guys a tripod, get some light, and uh, let's open this thing up. So to anyone that's just joined us at this point in the video, welcome to the unboxing of this iMac. 17 inch, um, late 2006, mid 2006, something like that. The last 17 inch model ever. And there were two of these made, of course, um, two of these outside of the BTO options. There were the stripped down educational model. Uh, which was, I believe, a 1.83 gigahertz model without Bluetooth and without some of the extra bells and whistles. And then there was this one, which was a 2 gigahertz model. It's the one that I have. It is available in 2.16 gigahertz, but that was a BTO, and they're really, really difficult to find. So, as you can see, I was lucky enough to get this in the original box, which is just awesome. So let's take a closer sort of handheld look around the box. On the top here, you can see we have the iMac and this, this right here, these days, it's crazy how retro this looks. But back when I was first getting into Macs, when I first got my MacBook in 2007, this was the latest and greatest thing to see. Um, front row running, this is Tiger front row as well. Old Apple remote sitting there. The wired Mighty Mouse as well as the Apple keyboard. This was prior to the aluminium keyboard coming out. And here we have, of course, the iLife uh, included logo. iLife 06 would have been included with this machine, I suppose. Um, on the front here, you can see we have Apple iMac. And then a shot that today shows probably a pretty damn thick all-in-one computer, but back then um, would just be incredible. Um, not much thicker than your displays of the time, um, give or take, and just to pack an entire powerhouse in there was, was crazy at the time. Looking at the sides, we have got um, Intel Core 2 Duo highlighted here as a, as a big feature on the side. It was crazy that now in the Intel days they could get dual core processors uh, in their sort of consumer machines, in their portables and in their iMacs, whereas before the dual processors were just reserved for the uh, big professional desktop towers like the Power Mac G4 and Power Mac G5. And of course the Core 2 Duo, these came after the Core Duo iMacs and that was also a big deal because these were now 64-bit and uh, as you guys know, Core 2, Core 2 Duo means that we get at least one more OS revision out of these. We, we get to step up to Lion from Snow Leopard, which is cool. Um, so well, even though Snow Leopard is a better OS, to be fair. But down here we have the iSight camera highlighted with uh, iChat here with a multi whatever you call it, um, conversation going on. And down here, you've got the Apple remote advertised with the front row icons here and the iLife icons. Um, that's pretty much it for that side. On the back, we have probably my favorite side of the box, or this could be the front of the box or whatever. It's actually a picture of the iMac with the uh, Tiger wallpaper, the Tiger desktop here, just looking absolutely stunning as always. You guys can see some of the old apps here that they don't really pump anymore. 
Um, let's take a look and see what we don't really hear about anymore. We don't hear much about iWeb. iWeb is gone. iDVD is gone, of course. Here's iMovie HD, iMovie 06, before it got completely ruined in the 08 version. Um, iChat. Of course, iChat is a thing of the past now with FaceTime and things like that. So, yeah, pretty pretty different. You can see a, a, a massively different system preferences logo there. Um, Tiger was the first Mac OS that I used as a current Mac OS. So it's still one of my favorites up there. It's one of my favorite versions. Then on this side, we just have a lovely... Um, plain and simple Apple logo and as you guys can see generally the box is looking in pretty damn good condition apart from the top lid everything else is looking really good so this is actually nice enough to put on display um, especially this side really nice so uh, I'm gonna put you back on the tripod and let's take out the machine itself so this is the first ever iMac um, that I've had that is newer than the iMac G4 and I don't really count the iMac G4 as a Mac that I've owned because I sold it so quickly. Um, I don't know what it was with the iMac G4. I'd wanted one for so long because the design, um, I thought the design was really cool, just like a lot of people think the design is awesome. And the machine, I just never clicked with the machine. After I struggled to get Leopard on it and realized how expensive some of the upgrades were um, at that time, I didn't click with the machine at all. Um, so, Hopefully I have a better experience with this machine. We've got some bubble wrap in here. It's packaged really nicely in the original um, polystyrene, but there's also some additional bubble wrap, which is really nice to see. Now I think the best thing for me to do would be to put this on the floor in order to pull it out. So let's get it down. And the first thing I see now that I've put it down is it does indeed come with what looks to be the original power cable. At least it's an Apple power cable. Um, so I'm not sure if this is an iMac one or not. It could well be. So there's that. And let's just move the camera down a little bit so you guys can see the money shot. And that is of course pulling out the iMac, which I'm gonna do like this. Oh. go whoa so there it is sitting on my desk let's move this box to one side and let's unwrap this beauty lovely lovely little bit of kit nice little 17 inch model perfect for my workbench oh yeah very very nice very nice indeed look at that guys there it is what a beauty what a lovely looking machine. So what I'm gonna do now is pull the camera off and we're gonna take a look around it. So you guys will have to bear with me if I sound like a bit of a noob at any point. Um, this is my first ever iMac, as I said, that's newer than an iMac G4. So this is my first ever modern iMac design. If you consider the iMac G5 to be the start of the, the design that we still pretty much use today, um, I haven't had any of those machines and you know they're very popular computers so that's pretty crazy that this is my first one, but um, let's take a little look at it. So firstly, we've got the display stand at the bottom, which is something that has remained pretty much unchanged. It's a timeless design at this point. Um, very similar to the display stand of my cinema display. In fact, it could well be identical. Um, coming up, we've got the chin of the machine here, and underneath, I believe you have speakers, ventilation, and of course, the access door for the RAM. Around here somewhere is a power light, I believe, and here we have the wonderful Apple logo. Now the whole casing has got this sort of see-through look around the outside. It's very nice. It's like the computer is floating in its own see-through casing. Um, of course, here's the 17-inch display, which I believe is 1440 by 900. Not a bad little res for a 17-inch display. Um, up here we've got the iSight camera, which of course is fairly obvious on this white casing these days on the IMAX. The iSight camera is pretty hard to see or the FaceTime camera or whatever they call it. But there we have it, a, a brilliant feature of these 10 years ago, absolutely mind-blowing for people. Of course, um, the display itself tilts back and forward and it actually tilts back a lot more than I thought it would, which is cool. So it does a little bit of that and it also faces down as well. A little bit loose, not sure if it would have been this loose 
from the factory. I very much doubt it, but it's still got enough um, enough strength to sort of hold itself in whatever position you leave it in. So over here we've got the slot load super drive, I believe, is in this one, which is nice. If not, it doesn't really make much of a difference to me. As long as it can read CDs and DVDs, that's all good. So a combo drive would be fine, uh, fine with me. Over here we have the power button which is nice. We have the um, cable management hole for the power cable because the power port is right there. Ah, I do not think this is the original power cable, folks. Reason being because I think these use those power cables that have like a circle. Um, as you can see, there's a circle there. I, yeah, this is not the original one, but it's an Apple one, so that's pretty cool anyway. Or it could be. I'm not 100%, but I reckon... I reckon it used one of those sort of circle design IECs, definitely. They wouldn't have left it like that. Underneath it looks like we've got a little Kensington lock there, which is cool. And over here we have our ports. So we've got a nice sort of uh, what now looks like a retro array of ports, but still nice for a machine of this age. We've got audio in and out, three USB 2.0s, two Firewire 400s, Gigabit Ethernet as well as Mini DVI. Mini DVI was common on these machines back then. My MacBook had Mini DVI. Up here, we've got the iMac logo and we have what I assume is a vent, I suppose. So that is the machine, folks. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. So here it is, sat in its position. As you guys can see, it just looks awesome. Um, the aluminium keyboard. Um, doesn't look out of place with this machine. I was worried because I, I originally wanted to use um, one of those keyboards because it just looks much more fitting with the design, but it still looks pretty damn good because um, it sort of matches the stand and the white keys match the casing. And of course, we've got the Mighty Mouse. So um, there it is. Look at that. And of course, it's going to be raised up on that platform as soon as I get it, which will raise the machine above uh, the eventual sockets that are going to be in this box. So that is exactly where it's going to be, um, you know, pretty much on the setup. And yeah, just if I roll back a little bit, look at that. Lovely, lovely. Yeah, I'm glad I went for a 20 inch, uh, 17 inch, sorry. I don't think a 20 inch um, would have suited there very well. You, can, you can't really see the screen size difference um, because of course the iMac is bulkier than a standalone monitor. Um, so I think it matches really well, it all looks good. So yeah, that's it for the unboxing video, folks. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of a cheeky cliffhanger here um, with a to be continued, because I am gonna immediately begin filming the first boot and the test of the machine and things like that. So stick around on the channel over the next couple of days. I'll make sure I get the videos out pretty close to each other. If I can do it in like two days or something, that would be really cool. Um, I am so, so excited to show you this machine, so I'll, I'll get the videos pumped out really quick. For those of you who watched the entire video, the journey um, of getting this machine and you know preparing for it, thank you so much. I really, really hope you've enjoyed it. Please leave your feedback down below. Let me know if it's something that you enjoy seeing on the channel, something that's got a little bit more of a retro feel about it, you know, just like I used to do my old videos. And um, for those of you who just watched the unboxing, uh, apologies that you had to uh, wade through a load of other stuff to get to it. But we have the machine, so the next video is gonna be all about the machine itself. First boot, testing it out, so on and so forth. So thank you so, so, so much for watching. I'm really excited. I'm gonna boot this thing up now. I'll see you in the next video.